Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette and this is Board Game Inquisition where I love giving you insights and information about the board games you might just want to have in your own collection. So today I come to you with a question. How many Polyonimo or Tetra style games are too many? Well if you feel like you might need another in your life, well then here's five things I think you need to know about my city. My City is a game about building up, well, your city. On your turn, you'll place these Tetris pieces, so as to cover up as much of the green spaces as possible, while also leaving room for those bonus point trees. And you'll score negative points for squares you didn't cover and points for those you did. However, this is a legacy game which means that when you play, there will be a reveal from an envelope that will make changes to gameplay. And after 24 different games, you can continue playing with the other side of your game board. Thing one, what's this game all about? Well, My City is a game that doesn't really have a whole lot of theme going for it. In fact, everything you need to know about the game comes from the title. It's very much a kind of puzzle activity as you fit these Tetris or Polyonimo style pieces together, um, trying to connect them up to, to score points and to cover certain things and uncover others. Um, however, that doesn't mean you can't inject your own little bit of theme or fun into it because you do get to name your own city. Um, and I had a lot of fun, you know, regaling myself with the tales of why these things were happening to Netlandia at any one time. And um, so while that's not intentional, I do think there is room for like imaginative play here um, and to make the game a little bit more exciting or more entertaining by telling your old tales about, you know, what, what's happening with your city. Um, now, similar games to this, there are lots. Um, as you may have noticed, this kind of Tetra style um, game is definitely on trend with things like Isle of Cats, well, Patchwork, um, and a whole bunch of others that I can't even list right now. What does make My City very different is the fact it's a legacy game, meaning that the game changes a little bit every time you play it. And there's a progressive nature going on here that you don't see in other similar titles. Thing two, what kind of things are you going to be doing while playing this game? So My City is a pretty simplistic approach to city building. You're given a player board that's a grid and you're going to need to fill it in with these polyonimo pieces on your turn. Now, every place you don't cover on your board is worth negative points. Um, if you leave trees uncovered, they're worth bonus points. Um, you probably should watch out for the river in the middle of the board. It's relatively tricky. And when you cannot place another piece, um, that's when your, your game ends. Um, so yeah, it's pretty straightforward to play and you know what, gameplay doesn't really change the more you play of it. Um, there are additions and things like that that I'm not going to talk about here because this is spoiler free, but for the most part you're playing the same type of game. And while that might sound incredibly boring, um, I know I thought it was, um, it's actually surprisingly appealing. Um, and I think this is because that the longer you play the game, the better you get to know it. Meaning you suddenly learn what all of the shapes are and remember ones that might be available at a later date and build around this information. Um, and the tension of waiting to see if your particular shape will come up before you're incapable of placing any further shapes is both exciting and interesting. Um, I think the thing that gets me most actually about my city is the fact that you're given all of the information in front of you and you roughly know how things are going to transpire, but it's up to you to make the best of whatever it is you're given. Um, this is entirely up to you as an individual because it is very much a multiplayer solitaire type of thing. You all have your own board, you're all doing your own thing. And so it's just you and the game and it's a rather interesting battle of wits. And I think that makes the game all the more satisfying when you do succeed. Um, my only mechanical complaint with, this, complaint with this game is that the little Tetris pieces are not double sided so you can't flip them, you know, reverse them to make them fit in places. And I'm not going to lie, it still drives me a bit crackers, um, but I'm learning to cope with it. Um, overall, how this game is put together is very, very clever in a way that you really wouldn't think from looking at the outset. Um, it's fun to play, it's light, it's interesting and it's easy. And of course, it's heartbreaking at times too. Thing three on the table. 
So this game has a pretty small footprint because you each just have your own player boards with your little pieces and then there's a deck of cards that goes in the middle to reveal which polyonimo piece you're going to be using that turn. Um, it really doesn't take up much space at all. In fact, I think you may not even need a table to play this because everybody has their own private board. So I guess that's its own advantage. Um, however, um, how eye-catching it is, I don't think very. If, if anything, you're going to be attracted in by kind of the activity that people are performing together rather than how the game itself necessarily looks when set up. Um, now, it takes about five minutes to set up, which is really, really great, and about 20 minutes for two of us to play. And I, I can't imagine it taking much longer even with more people because turns are simultaneous. Um, the rule book is really interesting in the sense that you're giving a, a given a one piece of paper page um, as an initial rule rule book so there's very little reading and then you learn more rules as you play in the nature of the legacy style game and I'm a really big fan of this I think it makes it really really good for families for people who don't want to read rule books and I make it makes the game feel very introductory and welcoming to all sorts of people so kudos for that idea I thought that was really really smart um replayability wise oh gosh um right well as I said before, this game is very similar every time you play, but I think that's part of its charm. Um, but there are these small additions um, as you reveal different things um, and open envelopes and that as you play. So I think it's, it's got a, a re lot of replayability to a point because this is a legacy game after all. It has a, a definite end. Um, but I think that replayability is really what this game is about and that excitement of delving your way through all of the envelopes to see what's going to happen to your city next. Think for how does this game look and feel? Well, it's not really much of a looker now, is it? And um, that's the case inside as well as out. Um, the box art is really unusual and abstracted. Like I get it's an abstract game, but like, I don't know, none of it seems to kind of draw me in or go, you know, ooh, I want to take this down off a shelf. I, I'm not sure I would have looked at it before knowing what the game itself was actually about. Um, there is artwork in the game and it's on those little polyolimo pieces and sure it's nice but it's just functional like everything else here there are no frills. Um, it's true it, that my city really wants to do all of its talking in terms of mechanics but not in aesthetics. Thing five is this game actually any good? Well it's been a long time since the game has really really enthralled me and I'm not gonna lie my city has me grabbed pretty good. Um, part of me thinks it's because it is so easy and quick to play that you can't help but go, oh, we'll just play another. Um, and before you know it, you're four games down the rabbit hole. But I also think that how easy and quick it is to play makes it relatively addictive because I found myself suddenly being able to make time for this board game that I couldn't have made for others because it is just that quick. So I'm getting in more games at breakfast than I thought before or in the evening times than I planned simply because it is just so easy to play. And not that of course, it's, it's also the fact that you're revealing new things every time you play. So you're, you want to go back, you want to know what happens next. And I find myself thinking about the next game we're going to play and how I might approach it this time, what I might try and cover, cover up, what pieces I want to put where. And I think that's the hallmark of a really, really good game. Now, production-wise, this game is absolutely lacking. There's zero doubt about it. The whole game is entirely very utilitarian. But you know what? I didn't miss it that much because you're so focused on connecting all those pieces and putting them in the right place that it wouldn't matter if they were shiny or made of solid gold. This game really is about the puzzle in all senses of the word. Um, now, the other very important feature here is this game is really, really simple. It's really easy to learn. It's easy to teach. It's very straightforward and everything about it makes sense, right? Because it's like, well, we're doing this to get to this and do to this. It's, it's just the way it's laid out makes it very inviting and easy for all sorts of players. And I think this is definitely, if I had such a thing, my family pick for 2020. Um, I think this is a wonderful game for all sorts of levels of gamers because I wasn't sure that this would appeal to me it looks like another polyonimo title um and i don't even like polyonimo games all that much but this one is definitely special and it feels very different um and it, you know what it's just so much fun to play so i think this is the game you want to be sharing with friends and family um yeah this overall like this is a fan fantastic game and i'm going to be really sad when i get to the end of it so do i think you should have this in your board game collection well, clearly it's a big thumbs up for me. I'm, I'm kind of obsessed with the darn thing. But if you're a fan of puzzly games that don't have a lot of setup or rules and that keeps surprising you every time you play, um, then you really need to go and take a closer look at this one. 
you've been watching Board Game Inquisition. Why not like or subscribe to the channel so you can get updates about my future videos. Or if you have any comments or queries to make about my city, just shout them off in the comment box below. And until next time, stay tuned for some more short and informative board game reviews. Take care, everybody.